Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to show you a few things such as the new database utilities, which are coming with RPG Builder 1.1 and the database functions such as export and import. Before that, I actually want to give you a quick update about the scene loader. It's not worth its own video, so I thought I would mention it um, now. And the scene loader is a small window here. It's not really like a big tool or whatever. It's something I'm personally using to go from one scene to another in the editor very easily just by clicking this. This was actually included from the beginning with RPG Builder for everyone, but it was not possible to easily add your own scene. Before that, you had to actually modify the code. So this is over in 1.1, as you can see, you can add your own scene from the editor. And I'm going to add one new to um, show you. I only have those three scenes in the project anyway, but I'm going to select the uh, main menu. Let's call this one main menu two, for example, here up, you see it's updated. Let's first go to the demo. And now if I click main menu two, it takes us to the main menu. So that's it. Um, no need to talk about it for too long, but I just wanted to let you know that um, it's also getting an update in 1.1. So now let's go to the um, editor part. So uh, utilities, first I'm going to collapse that. Database utilities. So what is this for? Um, as you can see, we still have the delete all character button, which is, well, deleting all your character on this local computer. But we also have a bunch of new ones. So it looks a bit scary, all those red buttons, but I actually want them to look scary because, um, well, it's going to do exactly what it's supposed to, right? It's going to delete a lot of your data. And it's really useful in the case that you want that, but um, it's something you have to be careful about. But anyway, when you click one, it's going to be be careful and it's going to tell you you are about to delete all abilities, etc. Um, so let's uh, see how it works. So here we have a database, which is pretty much the demo one. Um, we have items, abilities, and uh, pretty much everything the um, demo has. Now, if I go back to uh, settings and editor, I can go ahead either, of course, delete the entire database, but first I want to show you like we can sh we can delete um, individual modules. So here we have the combat modules, general modules and world modules. And now I just deleted abilities. I didn't delete anything else. Everything else is still here. I just deleted abilities. So if we go here, you see that we have no abilities anymore. Um, this obviously is going to break a lot of things in your project now, because look, if I now go to Spellbook, uh, well, all the abilities that were attached to the spell books are now gone, right? So this makes total sense. It's gone from the database. There is no way it will still be here. So like I said, it's it has to be something you you know you do when you know what you're doing and that you're sure that you, you're not going to miss those abilities extra. So yeah, that's pretty much all. Um, but now I'm going to go ahead and show you how we can delete the entire database with one click. So you simply click this button and it's going to do the same process, but for every single module. The time it's taking to do that, uh, well, it's already relatively quick, to be honest. Um, of course, as your database is growing, it's going to get longer, etc. But I'm quite satisfied already. But this is something that I'm going to improve over time anyway. So um, you can expect this process to be a lot faster in the future. Um, and after that, like I said, the database is going to be completely empty. And this is very useful. For example, if you have been using RPG Builder for a while and you don't really need the demo um, elements anymore, right? Because you can start on your own and you know the framework enough extra and you want to start with everything empty and um, new ID. So everything starting from zero extra. So as you can see, everything is perfectly clear. Great. We can now go back to um, the editor settings and collapse this. This is pretty much all I wanted to show you in the utilities. Now, we have a very, very, very cool um, new section here, which is database. And first of all, the first three fields, I'm not going to go too much in detail about it, but um, previously, so before 1.1, the resource folder, which we uh, used to have, so before this was THMSV and then in your project somewhere, you would have a resource folder when you import RPG Builder. Uh, well, this path has changed. It is now under Blink, Tools. So here we see uh, RPG Builder. And then the resource folder is directly inside the um, uh, RPG Builder and Blink directory. And the database, in case you didn't know, that's where the da database is. So under the resource folder. Um, anyway, so this path was hard coded before. So it was like, um, hard-coded string. So there was no way for you to um, move your resource folder because if you moved it under another directory or whatever, then the editor will literally just break. Um, so I changed that. 
and now it's uh, completely um, configurable for you in the editor which path you want it to be. If uh, also you make a mistake and you change the path or whatever, you can just click reset and it's going to um, set it to default. So most people are not really going to care about this, but if uh, you wanted to change the resource folder for whatever reason, it's now possible without breaking anything. Anyway, so now you see that we have also a um, export the database section. So this is a very, very interesting one. Um, this lets you in one click or well, a few clicks, depending on the settings you want, um, export your entire database. So we're talking about the database you currently have, right? Um, which is nothing right now. So let's add a few things. Exported ability one, for example. Save. I'm going to duplicate um, this a few times just to have a bit um, more things to play around with. And then I'm going to go, for example, to items and um, call this one exported item one. I'm only going to create one item. And actually what I'm going to do is this is going to be useful later um, to showcase a new uh, feature is I'm going to assign the ability. So you see this one with a really long name as an auto attack. I'm going to come back to this a bit later on why I did this now, but you will see how cool it is. Anyway, now we can go back to settings editor. And now let's say that we wanted to export this database for many different reasons. So this could be for us to have a backup, but something really, really cool opening now uh, with 1.1 is we could have people from the community literally um, creating entire set of databases that they you know, decide to share with the community or whatever. So uh, let's say someone wanted to reproduce classes from an MMORPG or an RPG or whatever, you know, like entire talent trees, entire um, sets of gear, entire quest lines, entire dialogue, etc. All of these could now be exported with one click and very, very, very easily imported in your database. I'm going to go to the import part in a bit. Anyway, when it comes to the export um, process, as you can see, you can either manually type the path at which you want it to be exported. As you can see, it does not have to be in your Unity project. It can be anywhere on your local computer. And you can also uh, browse directly. In this case, I want it to be inside video exports. And here it lets you choose the name of the folder. So like the backup database folder. So you can just assign whatever you want here. And uh, a bit below, you see that we have uh, a bunch of like toolbox here. And these represent once again, um, just like utilities or the modules. And here you can choose if you want to export all the modules or rather none of them, all of them, or one by one. For example, if you only wanted to export abilities, do tables and work position, all of that is possible. I'm going to export everything in this case. And I'm going to show you uh, so here we have the uh, video export uh, folder open. You see that it's empty. And if I open it again, up we now have the export one folder. If I double click this, you see that we have all the database folders. Um, the folders will exist even if they're empty. So as you can see, dialogue has nothing in it, but it's still here. But if we go here, we see the ability we just created. So exported ability one and all the duplicated as well as the items here. Perfect. So now we successfully um, exported a database. So now we have this export one folder, which contains all of that. And we can easily um, import it in the future, which is something I'm going to show you in a bit. So now what if uh, we wanted to import this database again? So first of all, what I'm going to do is simply delete the entire database. So um, we will start from zero once again. Now I go to abilities, items, it's empty. And if I go back to editor, I can simply go to database, import a database and select a path here. So now I can go under video export and just double click the folder of the database and select folder. Now we have two options when we import a database. The first one is override. So, um, well, as you can imagine, it will override your current database, which means it will first delete everything and then it will import this one. So this is something to be careful about. Of course, if you did not yet back up um, the current database, make sure not to override something you don't want it to write. Um, but this is very useful if you just want to replace your database with this one. So in this case, that's what I'm going to do. Once again, you can select none, all, or one by one. In this case, I'm just going to do all. 
and click override a database. Of course, they always come with a pop-up, all those buttons, because they are really dangerous in the way that, you know, they are very impactful. So I want to make sure that you um, avoid doing mistakes. So are you sure that you want to delete the current database and replace it by the new imported one? Yes. So it's going to take a bit of time, but it's already done. And now, as you can see, we once again have all our abilities here. And if I go to items, you see that we still have the reference here. So the item did not lose the um, ability reference that we assigned before. So of course, it's kind of a given, but you know, it's very, very important so that you can export, import things, and they always have um, uh, all the reference. So this is ready to use just as it was before. Now, something even more complex, which is also um, available for you and working, is that I'm going to once again um, go to editor and um, I'm going to go back to full screen. Editor, I'm going to once again clear the database. So we will reset everything. And I want to show you something pretty cool. So now I'm going to uh, create new ability and create a bunch. So duplicate, 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 extra. And you see that every time I duplicate this, um, the ID is changing, right? So it's going, going up by one. Now, um, what if I wanted to inject or like import another database inside this one without creating conflicts with IDs? Because let's say you create a new database before and you create an ability and then it's ID zero, right? So you export it and now it's not in your project anymore. But now you created a new ability, which is also ability zero. So what if we imported the other one without changing the ID? Well, your project will now be broken, right? Because each, I mean, an entry cannot have the same ID as another one. An ID is supposed to be unique. So what RPG Builder is now allowing you to do is to go um, in the database, import database and untick the override. And you see that the button here is changing from override to inject. As always, the same, you can choose exactly what you want to uh, inject or not. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and click inject. Now I go back to uh, combat. And as you can see here, so we have new ability here, starting with ID zero and exported abilities here, which have now been injected in the project. But remember that this one was ID zero before, right? Because it was the first um, ability we created before. As you can see, it is properly handled. It now has the ID 11. So um, when we do that, when we actually go ahead and click inject, but without override turned on, what it's actually doing is it's first importing the database. And in this, and in this specific moment, you have a lot of conflicts, right? In your project, but it doesn't matter yet because you're not really playing the game or whatever. But right after that, right after everything is imported, it is like putting those new uh, entries on the side. So every ability, item, and all of that that were just imported, it is putting them on the side, and it is one by one um, assigning a new ID to them. So if the last ID you created, for example, from your abilities was eight, then once importing that, it will start by nine, 10, um, 11, and so on. So first of all, it is making sure there is no ID conflict with the injected entry. So they all have their new on uh, unique IDs. But this comes with a problem also, right? Because remember that we had an item and this item had its ability assigned as auto attack. And this is saving an ID, not like a reference to a scriptable object or something. It's saving an actual ID. So what happens if we change the ID of the ability, right? Well, RPG Builder is also taking care of that for you. So as you can see, we still have the exact same ID or rather ability um, assigned as auto attack as before. It's not like picking one of uh, the new one we created because the ID is different or whatever. Uh, it is saving the references and it is reassigning. So essentially what it's doing without getting too technical is it's first changing the ID. So if, for example, if previous ID uh, was five and it's now uh, 12, it is, well, changing the ID from five to 12, but then it is also checking the entire database that you are importing, checking if any entry, so any item, any quest, whatever, had a reference to the ID, uh, you know, ability with ID five. And if it did, um, in this case, it is changing the ID also there from five to 12, and that's it. That's all there is to it. And now we completely um, injected a new database inside our custom database and they merge together perfectly and everything is going to be usable in game just as it was. So this is very cool. It means you can have 
your own database that you're working on, you know, for your own game. And now the community could um, choose to share some kind of package, maybe a potion, maybe whatever, like a nice crafting recipe, a nice quest, whatever, and put this outside, um, like um, on an upcoming maybe Blink website platform. This is something I have in my plans, but I don't want to talk about it too much yet. Uh, but anyway, all of this could be, you know, available to um, the Blink community and you can just import it um, just like we did and it will not break your project and you will be ready to use it um, immediately. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to share for this video. Um, it's a very, very, very powerful uh, new set of tools. Um, it is not something you're going to do all the time, at least not uh, delete and everything. But um, this is very, very, very amazing and important to have for RPG Builder, um, especially when you actually get to very serious development and production uh, games, etc. So anyway, I hope you like it. I hope you like how extremely easy it is, literally just a few clicks, like you, you pretty much have nothing to do. Everything is done for you, as always with RPG Builder anyway. Um, so yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. Let me know how uh, you like these new systems uh, in the comment or on Discord and see you in the next video. Thank you.